Welcome back, my fellow radiation nerds. Today we're diving deep into the radioactivity of ancient dinosaur fossils. During my recent trip to United States, I visited the Meteor Crater, which was an absolutely amazing experience. After the tour, I went to the souvenir shop, where I spotted some megalodon teeth. I heard before that sometimes they can be radioactive, so I quickly took out my therapy Geiger counter and I got very excited when my meter started showing increased levels of radiation. Of course, I couldn't leave without taking one home, and here I am. I was curious to what isotope made the tooth radioactive, so I used my racist gamma spectrometer to create a gamma spectrum which revealed that the tooth contains natural uranium. While the activity isn't particularly high compared to something like uranium ore, it's definitely detectable and reads about 1000 counts per minute on my Doodle Model 3 with a 44-9 probe at 1 cm distance. So now you're probably wondering, how does a fossil become radioactive? During the process of fossilization, the organic matter is being replaced with the surrounding minerals, and if those minerals contain radioactive elements such as uranium, the fossil can absorb them and become radioactive over time. This isn't just limited to megalodon teeth either, it can happen to all kinds of fossils. For example, at the Grant Mining Museum in New Mexico, there are several dinosaur fossils with significant radioactivity due to them being fossilized in a uranium-rich environment. Speaking of the Grant's Uranium Mining Museum, I highly recommend visiting it if you're gonna get a chance. There's a lot of fascinating information and exhibits in it, and the underground tour was a truly unique experience. I used to be a guide in a uranium mine, and I found it particularly interesting to see how uranium mining techniques compared between America and Eastern Europe. Thanks to the decay of radioactive isotopes, scientists can estimate the age of different fossils. This process is known as radiometric dating, and some of the most commonly used isotopes are carbon-14, potassium-40, and uranium-238. Exploring the radioactivity of my megalodon fossilized tooth was a lot of fun, and I have learned a lot while at it. I'm curious to hear, do you have any radioactive fossils in your collection? Or maybe you didn't know that fossils can be radioactive and now you will measure them? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active!